Hello everybody, my name is Ivan Ethos, and welcome to our final episode of Warframe in a Nutshell, Vault. Now, I know we're looking at Vault Prime, but as per usual, I usually have the Prime variant, not so much the main variant. So as you can see, Vault Prime has 100 armor, 300 energy, 300 health, 450 shield, and 1.0 sprint speed. Now, the base Warframe has 300 health, 450 shield, so no differences there, but only has 15 armor. It's probably the biggest difference between a, a base frame and a prime frame that's in Warframe right now. And then the energy sits at 150. So not only does it have a double energy, it has like, my god, almost 10 times the armor of the base frame as well. Now, the base frame comes with two polarities, a dash polarity and a V polarity, and the aura polarity is a V. So it does have these two, and then this as well, but doesn't have this extra V, which comes with the Prime variant only. So, as you can see, we are not modded, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to run into this. Now, I know we've already done some very, very simple work with Volt before, but it was a really short deal, each one of the different frames, so I want to kind of make things a little bit more specialized to Volt himself. So we have our lineup of soldiers, and as you can see, some have face placed, some do not. We're just going to go ahead and do some circles here. One of the things you're going to notice as we move around, especially as we slide, or we run on the ground, is there's going to be a little plus marker up in the top corner. That is Volt's passive. It can stack up to a 1,000 in number. And it's pretty interesting. So we'll go ahead here and uh, this all the way up to a thousand before we get started. So I'm going to show you the differences in what it does. Okay, so we're maxed out at a thousand. So, Voltable passive is grounded movement generates an electrical charge that's unleashed on the next attack. This is guns, melees, or any of his abilities. So, his first ability is Shock. 5 chains, 200 damage, 15 meter range, and yes, I know this is rank 3 ability, so it's not it's more powerful by far than what most people are going to start out with, but something to pay attention to. So, it stuns and deals high damage to a single target and chains nearby enemies, so that only the first target gets stunned, the rest of them do not. And we'll just... We'll, we'll... As you can see, all those enemies took a lot of damage, right? At least he did, but then the rest of them took substantially less. Now this guy at the back here has the least amount of damage on him, so we're going to try this again on him. If you noticed, the damage is nowhere near as intense as if I build this up. And as you can see, even against level 30, it takes quite a bit Goodbye. to kill them. So by itself, Shock is a very un a lackluster kind of ability. Go ahead and regenerate these guys. But it, one of the things that's really nice, it does get up to a thousand bonus damage, even if that damage is still mitigated from his passive. Now, something to... So we're going to look over his abilities in the wiki just to kind of um, play around with a couple things here. So... Okay, so something to pay attention to with, with Volt's passive, which is kind of interesting, is the damage itself is not affected by power strength, but the static discharge electrical damage can be combined with single elements or elemental mods on projectile weapons. So that's missiles, blades, that kind of stuff. But it does not combine with hit scans, so beam weapons, or melee weapons. So that's where it remains separate. Something to keep in mind. It is also not affected by damage mods of any kind. It, it is affected by critical hits and the combo counter of sniper rifles. Something to keep in mind with that. So if your weapon has a high crit chance, and then your, com your combo counter and your sniper rifle is doing good, and you put, you jump up into your static discharge, and then you snipe someone, it will actually deal a lot more damage. It stacks with those crit hits and stacks with the sniper rifle combo counter. 
It does not work very well with multi-shot. Just so that everyone knows. Alright, so now his ability shock. So the electrical status effect chains 50% of shock's base damage to surrounding enemies in an area of effect. So it's an area of effect, it's actually not an actual chain. The chain link range, however, how much range it takes, you know, to, to, to jump, actually is affected by ability range, damage, of course, by power, power strength. Um, shot can only chain enemies within the arc's line of sight. It will not phase through objects in the environment to reach animals within range, so no going through walls, and, of course, no you know, going through bulwarks or anything else that are put up by enemies, which is annoying. It can also be used with many actions without interrupting them, including reloading. So you can cast this while reloading your gun, which is a really handy little trick. Alright, so now it Volt's next ability. His next ability is kind of lackluster. To a lot of people who want something more offensive, it gives a speed boost. Now, the speed boost is a little bit of a misnomer as well, and I'll show you why. So you gain a brief boost of speed, which affects all allies in range. So the radius it affects is 25 meters, duration of 10 seconds, so 1.5 speed multiplier, and a reload speed of 17.5% increase. So I'll kind of show you why I think that this is kind of a misnomer. So here's my here's my melee swings. But when I activate my speed boost, as you can see, not only does it increase your movement speed, it also increases your attack speed. So something to keep in mind when you're playing Volt, it's not just the movement speed you get, you also get attack speed. And it's a great thing to use in combination with Valkyr and her war cry to make people go attack extremely fast. Also, apparently if you bullet jump near people, they get blasted down and take no damage, but they still get blasted down, which is kind of nice. Alright, Volt's... Next, uh, oh, before we do, we'll talk to a little bit of anything special in particular about the speed itself. So it, it works additively with fury and ability strength. So it actually gives. So the, if you have melee weapons that have like a, have a berserker or fury, which is the attack speed buffer, you actually stacks with that when you add. It stacks multipli multiplicatively, however, with other movement speed modifiers. So rush combined with speed greatly increases speed, and the reload get buff is additive bonus to stack to reload. So basically, if you have a thirty percent increase chance, a thirty percent increase to reload speed, well, let's, let's, let's keep it at let's say you get ten percent. You have ten percent reload speed, and then on your weapon you have a thirty percent. It makes it a forty percent reload speed. The only difference will be if you increase something else. So the way the formula quote unquote works is that 17% is the max, and you multiply that by your power strength. So if you have 130% power strength, it's 1. it's 0.17 multiplied by 1.3, and then you add it to 48. Because 48, let's say, is quick draw. That's the highest amount you get is 48%. So that brings it up to 70%. Because the one point the one the point seven one the point one seven ugh, is multiplied by one point three first and then added to point four eight, just to keep that in mind. Now the fun thing also about speed is that it's applied to volt and spoiler to your operator if you have them, which means um your your operator can move a hell of a lot faster if volt is using his speed on them. Additionally, allies can backflip to remove the speed buff if they want. So kind of like in Limbo's situation where people could just roll, but allies can backflip to get out of Volt's speed buff, which is kind of interesting. Another ability, however, that's also usable while reloading and doing other things. So move on to Volt's third ability here, is Electrical Shield. Now the shield is pretty nice. It has a couple interesting features to it. First is you can pick it up, but as you pick it up and you move, you... Well, you'd lose energy, unfortunately. But it does give you a portable defensive maneuver. It's kind of like Garuda's in a way, that, but it's not quite as wide and doesn't absorb damage, it simply blocks it. Now, beyond of doing that, if I hit that guy for 589... Whereas out here, 
I'm doing 78, 71, but behind here I'm doing 95, 90, 90, 90. As you can see, the electrical shield actually increases the amount of damage that you deal by a small amount. As you can see here, it doesn't really talk about that, however, in the ability itself. It just simply says it deploys an obstacle of energy, or it's cover in any situation. It's duration of 25 seconds, its distance per energy is 4 meters. So for every 4 meters, it drains 1 energy. Now the cool thing is, you can put a multiple of these, and as long as you have energy, and you can basically lock yourself into a nice little protective bubble that no one can get into unless they're in melee mode. And every so often, you can actually apply status effects, which is kind of fun. Goodbye. Now, in order to showcase the last ability, we have to go get some more energy. And I'll also discuss in a second here the anything special, uh, I don't remember if there is, about Electrical Shield. Electrical Shield, um... Ah! Shots fired the Electrical Shield by Volt and his allies gain 50% electricity damage and critical damage will be multiplied by 200%. 200%, which means this is actually something you use to get super big damage out of crits. So, let's see here. The bonuses are not affected by ability strength. The electrical bonus is an additive bonus applied to the weapon's base damage. The electricity damage bonus combines with our elements to create secondary elements on non-hit scan weapons. Hit scan weapons will separately proc both elements present on the weapon and electricity from the heat shield. So, ah. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so one other thing we, we can showcase here, I suppose. So, dual toxins again. We're going to reload these bad boys. Again, 193, 69, no, not the greatest. We lay in three shields now. Look at that. Apparently, each shield, up to three, because you only can have three out, I believe, at the time, will actually augment the damage further. It does not increase the crit damage, however, but does increase the base damage that is added to the weapons. As you can see, pretty big damage change. Up we go. And now for the last one. The last of Volt's many abilities, which are only four. And that is... Discharge. So... Those and... Alright, so then the last ability here that we have is Discharge. It's considered one of the, mo one of the best moves that Volt has because of what it can do to enemies. So what it says in the, the stats right here, it's a radius of 20 meters, a radius effect of eight, and duration of four, and damage of 1200, and effect duration of six, it's like, what's all this? Well, it's, it's kind of fairly easy to explain and hard at the same time. So basically when you activate discharge, you release this pulsing wave. And as you can see, it pretty much wipes out everything. So, the duration that it has is the duration that it travels outward. It's a bit like Mag's magnetic bubble, where basically depending on the duration and the range, it expands out at the base durate range first, and then expands for the duration of the effect. So when you're looking at this, the duration right here is the duration that you, you have for it to travel outward. So the effect radius and the radius are your, your range from it. The radius itself is how far it travels from you outward, and then the effect radius is how far it travels out from each individual target that you hit. So if I only have one target, they will become a pulsing energy rod for 1200 damage, and it lasts for 6 seconds. So it's 1200 damage over 6 seconds to enemies nearby. It also deals a flat, I think actually it deals a flat amount of 1200 damage right off the get-go. Now, to make sure that I'm not making mistakes on stuff, we're going to go ahead and look over... Uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and look over the discharge here. So, yes. 
Any enemies that are hit with the initial pulse or that enter the pulse's area in the first three to four seconds after the cast become stunned for the entire duration of the effect and emit arcs of electricity like Tesla coils, shocking hostiles who come within four to eight meters. So, the discharge range and Tesla rays are affected by penalty range. Enemies, affected enemies remain undamaged by discharge itself for the first 4.5 seconds, then begin to damage themselves for electrical damage per tick for the remaining effect duration. So, you want to have a higher duration on the effect, or you want to have lower duration depending on how big your range is. It's kind of complicated with, with, with Volt, and you have to pick a, a very delicate balance. Te loot crates will also undergo the Tesla effect, but can only be charged once. The uh, discharge damage, Tesla will fall off over the 20 meter range after casting, after the casting point remain at 100% linear, decreasing until the loot. Long story short, they get weak. The, weak the, the wave gets weaker the farther out it travels. Casting shock on a Tesla coil target moves on an overcharge, creating an area effect burst emitted from the target, so it's really great. Again, you can use it in air, and you can use it while wall climbing, and all this other crazy stuff, but that's pretty damn amazing. So it's a, it's a great skill. Now, there is one thing I forgot to mention about electric shield so electric shield can be cast so this electric shield can be cast a maximum of six times okay so you can have up to six, six walls and casting shock through the will will inflict a hundred percent of shocks damage to enemies that pa pass through it so you actually electrify the electric shield if you pass shock on it which is kind of cool and the bonus damage from Volt's passive is also stacked into the damage. So, if you run around, get your 1,000, and you shock your electric shield and run around with it and hit people with your shield, you'll be doing a lot of damage to enemies. You can also, uh, Mesa, the Gunslinger Warframe, can stand behind the wall and gain electrical buff to her pistols. And if you cast Ember's Fireball through an electric shield, it will change damage type to Radiation. Just so you know. So all primary and secondary weapons gain the electrical damage and amplified crit. Throw melee weapons do not get the effects of electrical shield. And then weapons that have additional sources of damage, such as the quanta, will have their additional sources affected by electrical shield so long as the damage can be modified. For example, firing a torrid grenade through a shield will affect the projectile damage and area of effect. Firing a mutilus quanta orb through the shield will not affect the orb's contact damage, but will affect the orb's explosion damage. Held trigger weapons will gain held trigger weapons gain hit scan properties. So there's some really cool, interesting things to this to this particular thing. But one thing you have to pay attention to is that weapons that have innate punch through, they can bypass electric shields. So this is hostile weapons as well. You might want to be careful with that one. So yeah, something interesting to remember about the shield and then any new tricks about discharge, there's really not much of them besides you can shock enemies that have been hit with discharge and make them explode and beyond that it's just kind of you got to be close to them in order to do the most amount of damage so with that in mind we'll go ahead and we will look at different potential builds for volt himself so we got our energy back up volt has no exalted weapon so everything he relies on is either his ability power or relies on his weapons that he has so we'll go ahead and we'll look at this. So we're going to head and we'll drop. You can do rifle amp. You can do steel charge. All these are viable. Um, most people will polarize this into a dash polarity for energy siphon. Because that's kind of important. It's really great for him. That's because what it can do. Now on top of that, you have your Matarai. In your Matarai, of course, as any economy build, you'll go to intensify and continuity. With your Vazarin, you'll probably get yourself redirection, because you're going to have an extra bit of shield, which will be great. And you might do Vitality, if you have the room for it, which I recommend that you do. The Dash Polarity, um, most people will run well with Flow, which I recommend doing Flow to get that extra energy into your pool. And then, from that point onward, it should all be about Streamline, Stretch, and actually I would go Reach, to get that additional range. This should be... This is an economy build for Volt, as long as you have these mods, which you should be able to have these mods by the time you get Volt himself. Now, Volt does have 
some augments, and one of them we can look at right here is allies can pick up the electrical shield. 25% of the damage absorbed will be added to Volt's static charge. So basically, you can give allies your electrical shield, and they can run around with them, and they can build up damage for you for your passive, which is kind of cool. Most people don't run this augment because it's not super useful, but it can be used. So now we'll look at our abilities and see what the big changes are. As you can see, everything's a little bit more efficient. There are some effects that aren't, uh, some stats that aren't affected, like, you know, chain links and the duration here. But it's reload speeds increase, the speed multiplier, the radius, the duration, all these are great. So we're going to go ahead and showcase what exactly this means for us. So first of all, we can see that a single bolt now can deal a little bit more damage than it used to. And having that efficiency, having that increased power strength, it really does add to the incredible amount of power and efficiency that Volt already naturally has with his first ability. So, again, very, very useful, that shock ability, but it's more of a utility thing for very low-level enemies. As you can see, even level 30s have pretty good resistances to it. Now with my speed, again, this is highly dependent on having a good weapon. You can use a melee weapon, which most people do use, or you can use a ranged weapon and rely on that reload speed. See, for, for me, the dual toxins is a pretty low reload speed, so we'll go ahead and... Look at that. Let me go slow that weapon fires. So we'll speed up. But see how much faster that is now that I actually have some reload speed on there? Or, well, not really, but I'm using my speed. It does increase the speed of the actual shot. Hmm, interesting. I think I found the secret passive of this weapon. It's all about headshots, apparently. Okie doke! I'll have to pay attention to that and when I look at the actual abilities of that weapon. Some weapons have some really sneaky skills that they don't really talk to you about until you start experimenting. So what's going to be the size of my shield now? As you can see, actually quite a bit larger. Quite a large bit larger. And But in this form it's not, but I can still do my slides and gain my ability and all sorts of things. So regular shots to the body don't do it, but shots to the head now, that's what does it. So headshots apparently with the dual toxis actually make them attack faster. Everyone should remember that. It makes them spew goo as well. Is it actually force slash procs? Hard to say. Alright, so now last but not least we'll of course simulate his last ability. I actually want to check something out. I thought I had a buff when I headshot it. I did, it's called Frenzy. Got it, okay. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead here and we'll discharge. As you can see, that pretty much wrecked everybody's face. Not even, not even a, and that was at a certain amount of range as well. So let's go back a little, let's go ahead and amp up these enemies. And I think this might be the, the, the limits that Volt can do. Now Volt is pretty good against the Corpus, but he does not do so well against the Grenier. As you can see, that's exactly what happens to enemies. So it actually did fairly well. Let's go ahead and amp him up one more time to level 100. And then we'll go ahead and we'll talk about where you can get Volt and what his abilities, what his uh, augments are. So let's go ahead and stand right here and go like that. You can see that explosion happening there. Okay. So still fairly powerful. Um, more likely not, big bunches of enemies don't really show up in most maps. You don't have to worry about individuals, so not the best skill, but 
Bolt is well known for being a great frame for players to start with. Really though, he needs his mods. He's really, really weak without his mods. He has some defensibility, but he's mostly reliant on his weapons. So, we'll go ahead here and we'll go back to our orbiter and we'll take a look at his augments. Doobly doo pop a doobly a. I believe it will be Encephalon Suda. Will be his augments. We'll take a look here. I hope these interest you. Mm, nope. Um, my next offer will be these Arbiters of Hexus. Perhaps these will show you the path. Yes. So you have Shock Trooper, which casting on allies will add 100 percent electrical damage to their attacks for 40 seconds. This is affected, of course, by duration and power strength. So the more power strength you have, Shock Trooper does more buff. Now one thing to remember about Shock Trooper, you know, just, just so you keep this in mind, Shock Trooper does not affect abilities. It only affects, you know, actual damage dealing guns and weapons. So it's something to keep in mind. Now it says that it adds temporary electrical damage to all attacks, but that is not true. I know this because I've watched it happen personally in-game. The electri electrical damage will only affect actual guns and melee weapons, but not abilities cast. If I am wrong, hit me up in the comments and tell me off for a while. He has shocking speed, which enemies touch while sprinting under the effects of speed will take 175 electrical damage with a guaranteed proc, which is great. It's meh. It doesn't scale very well with power strength, so it's kind of one of those things that doesn't hit so well. You've seen Transistor Shield, of course, and then you have Capate, uh, uh, cap, Capatice? I don't know how to say it. Carpatius, whatever you want to say. And basically, it converts 3% of the damage dealt into shields split among Bolt and his squad mates. This is a great way of getting over shields if you're in a situation where you actually need it. Most people don't, so it's not a big, you know, not a big issue. Most people don't run Bolt with any one of these four augments. He just doesn't need them. Some people do, some, most people don't. Now, where do you pick Volt up? Last question there. You pick Volt up from... Let the drum roll happen. From the dojo. In the dojo itself, there is... Oh, in the dojo, there is a place called the Tenno Lab, which we've been over before for Wukong, we've been over there for Neza and Banshee. And that is exactly what, or where, more accurately, you get these particular Warframes, and Volt is one of them. This is what the lab looks like. You can activate the panel right here, and then down this way you'll find there's Banshee, there's Neza, and here's Volt. All of Volt's parts, his blueprints, eh, everything, right there for him. Don't need to worry about anything else. It's great. So, that's pretty much everything right there. Oh, that's kind of weird. They're off-center. Why are you guys off-center? Oh, that's weird. Anyways. So, everybody, that's been Volt in a nutshell. Uh, this has been a slightly longer video than I'm used to, so I apologize for that. I just wanted to get all the information about Volt out there. I personally don't like him as much as Mag or Excalibur, for starter, but that's entirely on to each player and how they play their playstyle. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe for more Warframe content, please do. If you have comments, good or bad, leave them in the comment section and I will get to them as soon as possible. So everybody, I want to wish you a happy, no, happy, a Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, and whatever else holidays coming up for you. And until next time, I will see you guys in my next video that we have. Is